Thank you, Louis. That was a wonderful introduction. And we've been so grateful to have your partnership on the PRP um, over the years. So I will turn it over to Larry for the keynote address. Well, thank you very much, uh, Louis, for those very kind remarks. Um, you know, the PRP, I wouldn't even have thought of pulling together the idea of the PRP had it not been for the pre-existence of Scenic and my serving on the Scenic uh, board for um, some 15 years uh, before uh, we put the proposal and it became funded. It was clear to me that Scenic had done all the hard work, which is to integrate together um, uh, so many of the California campuses and then uh, actually having links out like the Pacific Wave uh, to Washington and on to NCAR and so forth. Um, and, and so we pulled together this skilled uh, and very experienced set of co-PIs, uh, Camille, uh, Phil Papadopoulos, Tom Defani, and Frank Wertheim uh, to uh, take the idea from DOE in 2010 that uh, demilitarized on DMZs on campuses were the essential way that data intensive science was going to be dealt uh, with. And that uh, what we needed to do was to integrate at a regional scale, if not larger, uh, those DMZs into an end to end uh, uh, community uh, for data science. Uh, and this included added in supercomputers. So we started from the beginning with SDSC and NCAR, NASA Ames, uh, uh, NERSC. Uh, but first we had to figure out how to terminate these uh, um, 110 to 100 gigabit per second networks. Phil Papadopoulos actually in a previous NSF grant through uh, Kevin Thompson's CC Star grant, the uh, UCSD PRISM, uh, develop these uh, idea that let's just take rack mounted PCs, but put um, uh, 10, 40 or 100 gigabit NICs, a network interface cards, as well as lots of storage, uh, multi-core GPUs, and the ability to add uh, up to eight gaming GPUs, 32-bit GPUs in them. Um, this then enables uh, the PCs to actually uh, uh, handle the fire hose of data that, that's coming in. In 2018 and 19, uh, Tom DeFani and, and the gang, uh, uh, John Graham and, and, and a number of our other colleagues went on a California road trip to actually visit many of these campuses, uh, which gave us an opportunity not only to work with the uh, many of the researchers there, but also to work on each campus separately with the CIOs. And um, we're very pleased that Anne is here uh, in panel two because she's an example at Merced of one of those CIOs. Uh, each campus is different. Each campus has different rules. We had to work with each of them independently. Once the network was up and going, we were fortunate enough to put together another uh, proposal that NSF was to fund through a different program that uh, basically took this platform and turned it into a machine learning platform by uh, adding a lot more GPUs. Uh, and uh, again, uh, different, uh, some new and uh, some old uh, co-PIs on that. And then on yet another program, uh, we were able to take the existing Scenic and its nearby connections uh, through Scenic's extensions to the Front Range Gigapop to the uh, Pacific uh, Northwest Gigapop and to the Imran in Chicago and on to Hawaii. Uh, that was the core of it. Uh, and uh, we were able, and you'll hear from Asana early, uh, later in panel two about how Scenic uh, technically enabled this uh, PRP birth to occur. But you're seeing this on the background of the quilt map, which is all the regional um, optical networks in the country. And that's what I always felt was uh, what we needed to do. You see, uh, PRP was born not just with Scenic, but four uh, regional optical networks federated together. But what about if we could then extend those uh, to include other members of Quilt, like Texas with its Learn Network, the Great Plains Network, uh, James Deaton, I think is probably with us today. Uh, then uh, uh, NizerNet, uh, where we're gonna hear uh, from Jim Kirianis, uh, and uh, this of course brought in PSC and, and TAC, 
uh, as more supercomputers and Kinber uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, then Internet2 uh, partnered with us, which brought in a lot of uh, capabilities and uh, data sharing and everything else. Uh, we'll hear uh, from uh, Anna later uh, about this. Uh, I want to point out that as we, we did all of this, we put a lot of emphasis on reaching out to uh, both uh, what NSF calls their EPSCOR under-resourced states uh, and also to um, the minority serving institutions. About 10 of the 25 campuses are minority serving institutions that are currently have these uh, uh, in these PC Fiona's uh, flexible IO network appliances on them. And about um, nine EPSCOR states uh, actually have uh, uh, applications running on the PRP now. Uh, we want to expand that, of course. The big game changer came uh, actually unexpectedly to me in 2018-19 as um, uh, Google open sourced its Kubernetes. What this enabled was that the user applications, which you used to have to log on, you know, remote log on and then move your application, do everything by hand, automated the idea of taking software uh, user applications, putting them in software containers like Docker and others, and then Kubernetes orchestrates that across a whole distributed set of nodes, which because we adopted it included not only the PRP, but then access immediately to the clouds, uh, as well as most supercomputers. Uh, this just uh, absolutely changed everything because it also enabled us to deal with the massive distributed data that was uh, organized by uh, Rook through uh, the Ceph uh, 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 storage system came out of Santa Cruz. Um, and, and so this now allowed us to do able to do both the um, uh, moving the software containers, but as John Graham has said, uh, enabled us to manage petabytes of distributed uh, data uh, for our users. Um, uh, without this adoption from industry open sourcing to the universities, which is kind of the opposite of how I grew up, in which the things like Mosaic came out of the universities and then eventually changed the world in terms of the private sector. Uh, now it's actually backwards. Um, and so uh, we've just grown like Topsy. And in these um, uh, Fiona's that are now on these 25 campuses, We've got over 7,000 CPU cores, 500 GPUs, uh, over four petabytes of uh, rotating storage. And all of this is running across the op pre-existing optical networks of Scenic, the members of the Quilt, and Internet2. Now, John Graham has been very helpful to me in, in, in organizing our thinking about how did this happen so quickly? It's only been six years from scratch, from start. And there's a set of rules that he's come up with. One is that uh, you have to identify technologies just before they take off, get in early, take them into the PRP, make them stable, get access to early hardware. We were, got some of the first uh, TensorFlow uh, processing units, for instance, from Google. Uh, we're working with FPGAs now. You heard about that with Casper. But most importantly, aggressively adopt the whole new generation of automation software systems that are coming out. And you'll hear more about this in, in John's talk. Um, get involved, become part of the open source projects, actually add software to things like Rook Admiralty and so forth. Uh, and then we organize the community using these modern, basically aspects of social networks like matrix chat. There's a weekly uh, tech call. Um, uh, uh, the uh, documentation is all online with the portals. And then as much as possible, make it as simple, almost turnkey for adding new people uh, to come on, including uh, their uh, adding their Fiona's. What sustains this is that we're constantly looking for new collaborations. And I'll tell you about a couple of those. Um, uh, using the emergence of social networks as a way to tie the community together. And then the idea that um, people are happy to bring their own Fiona's and plug them in because they can then burst out of their own capability into this very much larger uh, uh, organization uh, of, of computing uh, 
uh, uh, on demand. And so uh, that has also grown uh, enormously, the PRP. We originally uh, came in in the proposal uh, with these uh, five areas of science and technology that we wanted to take pre-existing multi-campus teams and bring them together. Now we're fortunate here today that you're gonna hear from Frank, who's gonna cover both uh, particle physics uh, analysis, but also uh, the emergence of LIGO and IceCube, uh, both gravitational wave and neutrino observatories, uh, and how those have, have come into these uh, areas that we uh, had in the original proposal. Uh, cancer genomics was actually uh, there in the original proposal uh, with the Cancer Genomics Hub, uh, but Alex Feltes has taken this so much further, and he's going to be telling us about that. Scott Sellers is our first rock star uh, application uh, uh, user uh, that just really took the whole thing out for a drive on atmospheric rivers, and he'll talk about that in panel one. Uh, Jeff Weekly, of course, set up the wave at Merced, and uh, he'll be uh, uh, chairing one of the uh, first panels. But in addition, what's amazing to me is that these new four areas have emerged that weren't in the original proposal. You're going to hear from Ilkai Altinus uh, about the Wi-Fi uh, 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 amazing uh, system uh, for uh, predicting the growth of wildfires in real time. You're going to hear from Dan uh, Wertheimer uh, about our newest partner, Casper, uh, which is itself a huge distributed organization for radio astronomy. Um, and I should say that um, uh, two others we won't hear from, but I, I find fascinating is that during the last year of COVID, um, the uh, Open Force field, uh, which is an organization, uh, open source organization of both data as well as software, they're using up to a thousand uh, PRP CPU cores sustained to calculate then force fields that go directly into things like folding at homes, simulations of the COVID uh, spike proteins and their binding to our uh, molecules and our lung linings, for instance, and so forth. Uh, this is the largest, the open force field is the uh, largest uh, user of CPUs of all 400 plus application namespaces. And then finally, the thing that I think is going to probably be the most important long run, uh, NSF has been supporting and DOE is going to probably put a billion dollars into actually getting the entire wiring diagram of, say, a mouse brain uh, over this decade. And Mark Ellisman, who has been with us since the Optiputer here at UCSD, his electron microscopy laboratory uh, is one of the drivers of this, along with Matthew Medaney, who's done this beautiful work on uh, finding the cells within a piece of the brain using electron microscopes and labeling it all, all this using the PRP in a way that uh, he says is uh, really quite superior to uh, trying to use batch supercomputers, uh, which uh, have been traditionally. Yet the NSF has a very large grant uh, that funds multiple universities that we are working with to expand to support this understanding the brain. And I think this will grow very rapidly over the next year. I'm not going to take you through this, but I just want to show you with Grafana, we're able to actually track. This is uh, all of 2020 from January 1st on to the left to December 31st. This is the GPU usage. And you'll, you'll notice here that that's 500 GPUs uh, that are almost uh, pegged for the entire year. The pink in the middle is uh, Frank Bertheim is the, co is the PI of this for mainly IceCube, but also some of LIGO. So when he talks about it, just remember, this is the kind of consumption of our resources that, that is going on. Uh, here, this big burst here, back when the lockdown first started, this is in March, uh, this was uh, folding at home, grabbing a very large fraction of our GPUs to do the very first uh, modeling of the uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, and then many, many of these others are machine learning. Uh, so that's one of the great uh, things I find because machine learning is going to be integrated now with virtually every field of science. And so the fact that we have got in one uh, distributed infrastructure, this huge community of machine learning, artificial intelligence people, as well as people from physics, biology, uh, the, um, uh, from the earth sciences and so forth, I think out of that mixture is going to come a whole bunch of new world uh, 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 of uh, 
we're seeing, I don't know how you saw with cosmology, Mike Norman, uh, uh, at, uh, who has been the director of uh, SDSC for so many years, uh, they're actually now using machine learning to vastly increase the capability for simulations in 3D of these uh, huge billion plus uh, particle uh, cosmologies in a whole novel way that has never been there before. Well, as Camille said, the most important thing to me that has come out of this um, quest, uh, the PRP, is building a community from scratch. And one of the ways we did it was through these very large in-person workshops that uh, Jerry Sheehan uh, at Montana State then as CIO hosted. The first one in 17, many, many of you, a large fraction of you were at either this one or the second one uh, that was in 18, uh, that Maxine Brown and others have helped pull this together uh, with our partners globally. For instance, we have uh, people, uh, our friends in Korea and Kisti are with us today. Um, and then there was a, a shared one in 19, a little a few months later between the quilt uh, in a, uh, the uh, Kevin Thompson's uh, uh, CC Star um, and cybersecurity meeting and then uh, Dana Brunson, um, uh, who I, I think is probably with us today. Um, and Dana, I'd still say whatever you say they should do. Anna is going to talk about this building of community and how it's an ongoing process. Internet 2 is going to make some very big contributions to this uh, in the uh, coming time here. Uh, I want to uh, uh, have my hat off to Camille, my co-PI, and her really great team at Berkeley for science engagement. They have put together a lot of uh, local uh, conferences uh, here. I think that's actually Camille there at Berkeley. Um, uh, uh, in different uh, campuses, but also then on different topics like bringing together people from microscopy and, and astronomy uh, data processing flows. So where this is aggressively actively building uh, community uh, and Chris Hoffman has been a big help on that. He's gonna be there uh, uh, as moderator of the futures panel, the last panel, and we'll talk about that. Uh, this is a, a slide that Tom Devani smiling up there at the top. Uh, he's going to be in the futures and, and talk about this. Tom has been uh, my partner in um, crime uh, or uh, otherwise uh, uh, working on these grants for now uh, 30 some odd years um, and uh, almost 40. Uh, and uh, he uh, actually is the person who pulls most of what uh, the PRP happens, uh, he pulls it together because he has all of this work with the technical community that uh, uh, happens uh, every week. Finally, I just want <clears throat> to say that, uh, uh, you know, one of the most satisfying things to me has been building the community to be more inclusive and to have more diversity. Here you see, uh, these are photographs from our um, workshop for minority serving institutions and also for EPSCoR states uh, that we had in conjunction with the second uh, national research platform. And we're so happy that Richard Allo was able to join us and he'll be on panel too. Richard uh, has been our guiding light for, for me and for Tom for almost 20 years now that we've worked with him uh, both at Jackson State at NSF, at Jackson State and now at uh, Florida uh, uh, AMU. And uh, he uh, has, I think, been one of the most important voices in the, in the country in, in trying to bring more of the minority serving institutions into the front of the, of, of the, of the advances uh, that are happening, not with handing downs, but right there on the front lines. And I think over the next 18 months, uh, this is where we'll put a great deal of emphasis of, of working with Richard and, and others to to bring even more uh, engagement uh, than we've been able to do in the past. With that, I'll stop. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's a lot of these slides of many of you have seen before, but I thought just to put everybody on the same page, we should go through the, the whole story of, of how this um, has come to be. So uh, with that, Camille, I'll turn it back to you. I think we're a little bit ahead of time. Yeah, that's great, Larry. Thank you. That was such a wonderful tour de force of the history of the PRP. And thank you also for giving a wonderful preview for what's to come in the next two and a half hours or so. Um, that was really great to see that all tied together. Um, just a, a couple of comments too. Um, I'm 
always honored to be a University of California uh, employee and staff member and um, just to say to speak to the power of networks for the UC as well uh, and the Institutes for Science and Innovation. So Larry at Cal IT2 and us here at Citrus that has also really facilitated these connections among all of the UC campuses. Um, and I want to thank also Tom Andriola, who at the time was the CIO for UC uh, and gave us some seed funding before we were able to go then to NSF and get the larger funding. So that was really important for us as well. Um, I was also reminded I have my Montana State water bottle <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from the meetings um, that we had up there. So that was really great uh, to bring those people together in in real time in real life uh in in the before days so we hope that we'll get there again 